Okay, we're with we're with uh, yeah Keith McHenry for uh, one last question after his uh, discussion with us last night, and this came up from a bunch of different angles. But what we'd like to know is, in light of all your stories and all the challenges and struggles you've encountered, and you know the personal difficulties with all the police and the arrests and the setbacks and everything. How do you maintain your cheerful optimism every day to keep doing the work you do? Well, you know, there's a, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, first of all, just feeding people is so uh, rewarding and fun. And even if it's not a person really in desperate need of food, it, people just really appreciate it. And there's such good energy just around that one basic task alone. And anybody that's cooked for other people knows how amazing that is. But then the other thing is, uh, the aspect of it, is all the other Food Not Bombs volunteers that I meet, they're just so inspiring. These young people who have like, dedicated their time to collect food, to cook it and serve it, and they just seem to have so much proud, pride because of doing that. And it's just so inspiring to have these conversations. And so all day I'm blessed by people calling me or emailing me from every corner of the world telling me about um, how much, you know, their doing Food Not Bombs has meant to them and how excited they are about some project that they're doing. And that is also really, uh, you know, inspiring. So you couldn't possibly be sad under those circumstances. And then the other thing is, for some reason, the issue of how the dynamics of society is and the struggling, as painful it is to see that politicians and corporations are making decisions which are causing so much hunger and poverty, there is this human uh, uh, energy that happens all over the world to try to circumvent those crises and to make a difference and to try to resolve these, these problems. And I just find that that's just so beautiful, and uh, it motivates me when I see, one, a problem that needs to be resolved, and the fact that people like myself can just organize and figure out how to, uh, to resist. And so there's all, it's just, uh, uh, um, I find it just very inspiring to, to do all those things. Well, thank you for that and for the example that you set. And so for our last little bit, um, what advice do you have for people who are actively engaged in activism or inspiring activists? Well, to think, you know, for activists to really um, look at the long view, which can be hard, particularly when you're a younger person, you know, you're, there might be, an, you know, like right now, climate change is a, a disaster. And of course you want to do, you've got to stop the XL Keystone Pipeline, you've got all these things to try to organize around, and it can just seem frenetic. And, and you know, when the United States announces a war, then you, you've got, a, or what, you know, some kind of uh, crisis, like I, when I was running into my friends in Indonesia, you have this whole master plan to destroy the beautiful archipelago of Indonesia, just for coal mining and gold mining and timber harvesting. It just seems like a horrible, crisis and you've got to do something right now and definitely we do but also um, consider that uh, you know just to relax a bit and realize that this kind of social change will take a long time and that there isn't this one event that marks f the beginning of freedom and the end of of some of the crisis and so on and to uh, just be prepared to do it for decades to organize for decades rather than for weeks and that will take some of the stress off of you to uh, to feel so frenetic about having to um, you know resolve the crisis now and then the other thing is to figure out what aspect of social change also uh, inspires you in other ways like so I'm an artist so one of the main things I try to do in my social activism is to figure out every place where I can do paintings and drawings and art to further the cause of Funat Bombs so that I'm getting uh, two things, my own personal um, you know, gratification by doing my art and at the same time making a difference. So that will help you, um, you know, if you're a musician or a writer or a gardener or whatever, if you have your passion that's sort of like your hobby or your passion or what you want to do in life and combine that with social change, it will make it possible for you to keep organizing for 30, 40 years without burning out. 
Well, thank you for that. And thank you for coming to our little community. We really appreciate it. Well, thanks. It's so beautiful here. It's just amazing. And it's really cool to meet all the people here. And uh, like to find the empty bowls is from here and things like that. That's just so cool. <laughs> I think it's amazing. Thanks a lot. Thanks.